Hey guys, welcome everyone. I'm gonna give everyone another minute to join us and then we're gonna start. All right, so uh, hopefully everyone who was planning to join us live is here. Welcome guys, welcome everyone. My name is Vera and today I'm going to show you how to paint our daisy, but we're going to do it a little bit in reverse today. So it's going to be, oops. Um, a reverse view of that. So first thing that we're going to need, let's go through all our supplies to make sure we have everything that we need for today. First thing that you're going to need is um, your canvas. I'm using a fairly small canvas, 8 by 10 inch, but you're more than welcome to use any size that you want. It doesn't have to be the specific size. Um, next thing that you're going to need is a regular pencil because we're going to start with outline. I did provide a downloadable outline for anyone who would like to pre-sketch it. Also, if you're watching from the video and you didn't receive the email or you're maybe not a part of Facebook group where we posted that, I will include the downloadable outline in the description of this video after we're done as well. But I will be showing you how to sketch from scratch. So just grab a regular um, pencil, nothing special. What else are we gonna need? We're gonna need, of course, some paint. If you painted with us before, you know that we only use student grade acrylic paint, primary colors only. So basically yellow, red, blue, plus black and white. So that's what I'll be using today, as always. If you prefer to use pre-mixed paint, you're welcome to, you can totally do that. But keep in mind, you're gonna need a lot of colors because it's literally every color of the rainbow here. So, I mean, you could definitely get them pre-mixed if you prefer that, or maybe you already have a large set of paint at home, then no problem, use the pre-mixed colors. The reason why we usually do primary colors only versus the pre-mixed for our tutorials is, first, we don't wanna require you guys to buy more and more paint every single time, because it gets quite pricey. Um, especially if we know that we can mix every single color from just five primaries. And also, it's good to learn how to mix. It's also a very important skill and very valuable. So those are the reasons why. So yeah, you can either grab um, primaries or pre-mix, whatever works for you. And if you have an eraser, that would be awesome. You might find it helpful same sharpener, but really not, su not super necessary. Just if you have it, great. If you don't, no big deal. A um, couple different brushes. It's totally up to you which brushes you want to use for this painting. Um, I, I would just recommend something larger, something medium, something small. There are actually not a lot of small details in here, which is good. Uh, and what that means is you don't really need a really good small brush. Usually small brush is probably the most important brush for the any painting because it has a pointy tip and you can get really fine details with it. But because this one doesn't have any fine details, really, very minimal amount, this brush, you can grab it because there are certain things that you could still use it for, but it's not the most important one. I would say the most important one that you're going to be using a lot is a medium brush. So for my medium brush, I'm going to go with a rounded today. So I'm gonna use this one for my medium brush. Do you see it's a uh, just a rounded brush? And for my large one, I'm gonna use square, but again, that's just a personal preference. You could use a large pointy brush as well. 
You can use them in any shape, as long as you have a variety of sizes, that's all that matters here. And if you guys haven't painted with us before, I just wanna say that we are recording this tutorial. So it's being recorded and you can come back and do it anytime. So if something doesn't work out today and you just, you can either complete it or you can't even start it today, but you accidentally maybe came across or maybe you just stopped by for a minute to see how it goes, no problem. You can come back and do it anytime. It's gonna be right here, not going anywhere. All right, I hope it gets the, all that out of the way. And now let's paint. So again, I'm gonna start with drawing. I'm gonna start with sketching our flower. And again, I'm, as I mentioned, it's gonna be in reverse because you know, when I made it, I kind of looked at it and I find that the reverse image looks better to me personally. So I'm gonna do that, not that it matters. So what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna start by positioning the middle of my flower. And I would say vertically, middle is a middle basically, but it's not gonna be horizontally in the middle, it's gonna be a bit to the right. So somewhere right here, I'm gonna put a circle. And a good thing about sketching with pencil first versus sketching with paint or just, you know, freehanding everything right away is because it gives you ability to edit your sketch as well. So if you don't love your lines, you can redo them. Um, now I'm gonna move on to flower petals. I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flower petals. This is how I laid out my colors. If you end up having more flower petals or less, that's okay, we can always adjust this. You just, you're not gonna be going by the same flower petal as I'll be going, but you'll be the, using the same base instructions and filling your flower petals accordingly. So you may end up, if you have more flower petals, you may end up with certain shades being broken up into few flower petals. If you end up with less flower petals, you may end up like condensing, for example, this, getting rid of maybe this one, for example, or condensing this. So you may just have to rework your colors a little bit. But I'm gonna aim for about same. I'm gonna aim for seven flower petals. So I would start with the one that goes, I would say right here on the left. So it's just gonna go straight on the left, right? I'm gonna position one somewhere here. And then I'm gonna position two on top and a third one in the corner. And the same here, two on the bottom and third one going into the side. So basically one, two, and then one into the side, one into the side, one, two, and so on. So I usually like doing them lightly first, so then I can see if I like it or not. And also what would be helpful if you do like around around them to make sure your flower petals end up being about the same height, but also it's not super necessary. Like, I mean, none of it. It's totally fine to freehand it. Not a big deal. All right, so those are my first row of flower petals. I'm gonna have two rows. Let's just perfect them, make sure they're nice and to our liking. And this is where the eraser comes in. This is why it's very handy to have. I'm personally, if you guys painted with me before, you know, I wanna sketch, I use many lines. I don't do like one line and stick with it. I add many lines and then I only keep the ones that I like and I just erase the ones that I don't. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna edit my flowers. I'm gonna get rid of the lines that I don't like. I'm gonna keep the lines that I do like.
All right. And now I'm gonna do second row, second row. It's super simple. Literally right in between every flower petal, you just add another one. And that's it. Right. Done, done, and done. And of course, get rid of any lines that are unnecessary. Erase all of those extras. Okay, awesome. So now we're gonna move to our painting. I'm gonna put my pencil away and my eraser. And we're gonna start with the background. So the background is actually very simple. It's just white and gray. So I'm gonna start by going around my flower with white. And then I'm gonna add gray and then I'll merge them. So again, nothing too complicated. So, and I'm gonna use two different shades of gray here actually. So I'm gonna start with white. Just take plain white. I'm gonna use my large brush, but feel free to use any brush that you want. Probably not the smallest one because that just will take you forever. And the thing about the background is you wanna work on wet. So I'm gonna go first just around my flower petals and I'm using, I would say, a fairly generous amount of paint here. So I'm not using just like a very little bit of paint. I'm using a good amount. I wouldn't say it's a massive blobs of paint but it's not a little bit either. And I'm just going right around my flower petals. And for those of you guys who, again, maybe this is your first time painting with us, just keep in mind when we do these tutorials, we are actually going at a pace that's comfortable for us instructors because we know that a lot, everyone paints at a different pace, right? Some people love taking their time and really uh, perfecting their painting. And some people just, fast in general like it's the same like i generally find if you cook fast you likely paint fast not that it is a rule but you know some people are just generally faster and doing things so if that's not you and you feel like whoa slow down where are you going how far i cannot keep up that's okay there is a rewind button even as we're live you can rewind and rewatch sections of this video but also once it's done recording and maybe you're watching from the video recording, you can pause. So pause as many times as needed. We hope you do. We design it the way that we want you to pause it every time when you need a little bit more time. So feel free to do that. All right, so do you see I went around my flower with some white. And now after that, I might even go a little bit further because my gray is gonna overlap my white, right? So it's not wrong to have a lot of white around because again, we're aiming for some overlap there too. So you see, maybe I'll add even a bit more. And after that, I'm gonna make my light gray. So I'm gonna scoop some white on the side. I'll add some black to it. I'll make a fairly light gray. So you can see I'm not going for anything dark. Uh, for darker gray, we will add it on top, but for now, we're just gonna start with the lighter version. You see? I would say medium light to light. And then I'm just gonna color the remainings here of whatever wasn't colored with white at all. And then I'm gonna start merging it, merging it into my white. And how I'm gonna do it? I'm gonna start at the area that already has gray, and then I'm just gonna do this kind of brush stroke. So do you see? Towards any side, first right around the area where the two colors connect, and then going towards the white. 
And as you do this, your brush is going to be running out of paint. So the, your brush strokes are going to be getting lighter, lighter, and lighter. And you will create a really nice, very abstract like blending. Then when I move to another section, I'm going to refill my brush with paint. And again, I'm going to start at the dark corner. And I'll do the same thing. All right, so that's our first layer. And for the second layer, I'm just gonna make a darker color. So on the same spot, I'm just gonna add more black this time. Make, I would say about medium gray. I wouldn't call this a dark gray. I would say it's about medium. And um, you could do medium dark probably, but I wouldn't go dark much darker than that. And with a dark to, uh, sorry, medium to dark gray. I'm going to start at the ends. I'm just going to add a little bit. And the same technique. Blend it further. It's this time I'm just not going too far. And all of that is much, much easier to do while everything is still wet. Same here, starting right at the corner. Then merge it a little bit into already existing colors. And then if you need a bit of extra blending, you can always wash off your brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and with a clean, somewhat wet brush, you can go over any areas that require a bit of blending and just do it in the same manner that well, we did earlier, so it's like, almost like a crisscross little brush strokes. All right, and if you need to add white, you can. You probably wouldn't, but if you do, you can do that as well. Just take a little bit of white and wherever you feel like maybe you went a little too far with your gray, you can always add a little smidge of white if needed. And that's my background. I'll give you guys a couple more minutes to do that and while I... Wait, I'm going to do my edge because I actually like doing my edges. I like having my edges down. I find that they look really nice. You see, I like the look. I mean, you don't have to. It's totally optional. And I'm gonna check the chat in a second to see if anyone has questions. So if you do, feel free to put them in chat.
And on this side, I'm only going to do the edge here. So a little bit on the bottom, a little bit on top. All right. There we go. Background is done. Let me see if anyone has any questions in chat. Hi, thank you. I am staying warm. Hope you're staying warm too. It's pretty cold out here. Um, to answer your question, is there a pattern? Yes, I will be adding it in the description of the video. We actually did end up, um, we sent it out, we emailed out the pattern to anyone who pre-signed up for this tutorial on our website, because that's what we do. We email out a link to watch and a reminder and any patterns, but also we posted a pattern um, in a Facebook event page. But yeah, I will also make sure after we're done that I will add a link to pattern in the description of this video, but also it's so simple, you guys. So don't be afraid to give it a try. Maybe it will work out just fine without a pattern. And also pattern is only will only work for this size of the canvas. If you're working with a larger or smaller canvas, you'll either need to adjust the size of your pattern or do it from scratch. But I believe in you, give it a shot. And how long the video will be up for? Um, forever. You can come back and do it anytime, not going anywhere. All right, so I wash my brush, dab it on a paper towel, and I'm gonna move to our actual flower. So the flower is tricky. Background, super fun, simple, easy, abstract. Um, flower tricky, and the reason why is there's a lot of mixing. So what we're going to do to achieve the really good vibrant colors here and have the solid, solid coverage, we're actually going to add two layers on every single flower petal. So the first layer is a base layer where you just lay out your colors. So do you see how um, what makes this painting really pretty, in my opinion, is that every flower petal actually has a little smidge of a previous flower petal and a little smidge of following flower petal in it. So it's not just pink because on the left is orange and on the right is purple. Um, it actually has pink, but also it has a gradient, slight gradient almost within the flower petal as well. So we're not gonna aim for that up front. We're not gonna, that's not our objective for the first layer. First layer, we're just laying out the colors. So this is gonna be straight orange, this is gonna be straight pink, this is gonna be straight purple, this is gonna be straight purpley blue, it's gonna be straight light blue, straight teal, and so on. So we're just more doing them flat. Now, second layer is where we're gonna start pulling from the um, all the nearby flower petals. So right now, it's and you know it gives you a good ability to practice your uh, your mixing a little bit as well, because the first layer is gonna be fully covered by second layer. Well, likely, but. So if, for example, you don't love your color mixer in the first layer, you will have ability to adjust that on the second layer. But still, yeah, try to, of course, get the color that you want right now because it will create a beautiful base for your second layer. All right, so I'm gonna move to my medium brush this time. You can use, again, if large one still works for you and it's comfortable and it's easy, great. You can use that one, nothing wrong with it but also medium brush, I personally find a little more comfortable for this. Alrighty, so which one do we start with? I would say it doesn't really matter. Let's start with our pink one. Um, but again, whichever one works for you, works for me. So my pink one is gonna be this one, right? Because I'm doing everything in reverse. So pink is super simple. You just take some white, Add some red to a desired shade of pink. And there you go. Just two colors, nothing crazy. And then go ahead and color in that flower petal. Mm 
Oops, I think I got a little bit of purple in there. Accidentally, All right, so that's my pink. Now, the next two colors are going to be orange and purple. So I'm going to get out my, I'm going to do my first layer. I'm going to get it out of the way because then it's easier for you to know what's going to go in between as well. Because if we mix this two, it, it's a, it makes it a little harder. It's easier to lay out the colors here first and then mix the in-betweeners. So I'm going to do orange on my right here. So um, you can mix a new one or you can just use the same spot and mix there. It really is up to you. I'm going to mix a new one. So it's white, a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to go fairly pastel orange. I'm not making like a super vibrant orange. I'm going a little more pastel with all my colors. Because um, as you notice, my daisy is quite pastel after all. So I'm going to do something like that. And again, you can always adjust that on a second layer too. All right, and on the right here, I'm gonna do a light purple. So as you can see, it's not like a really full on purple. It's still a little on a pinker side. Um, yeah, so we'll mix that in a second. All right, my purple. So I'm gonna take some white. I'm gonna add some pink. And a little bit of blue. So maybe a little more pink now that I'm looking at it. I think it's a little more warmth. I think this should be a good color.
All right. So next one I'm going to do, this one is going to be like just a pl plain light blue. And this one is going to be a mixture between a purple and a light blue. So you might actually find having this one done first easier because then it's easier to figure out what color is going to be here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make my light blue. I'm going to take some white, some blue, mix them up. It's just a nice light blue. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color this. And see, now it's easier for me to decide what color is supposed to be in between. So again, I'm going to start by making light blue, which is just a white and blue. But then I'm going to start adding a bit of red to it. Until I arrive at the color that's something in between the two. So I think it could get a bit redder, actually. Let's see. All right, I would say this is pretty close, but maybe a bit lighter. Hey, I think this is pretty good in-betweener. All right, and now I'm going to move on to teal and yellow, and that pretty much concludes our first layer. So for teal, I'm going to take some white. Again, I'm starting mixing with uh, my white, then a little bit of blue, making my base of light blue. And then to that light blue, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. Let's see. It's actually a really nice color. It's like teal, mint, something in between that. And I'm going to add it right here. And then I'm going to add my yellow, but my yellow, I'm actually going to not do straight yellow. I'm going to mix, of course, yellow and white to make it more pastel, but also I'm mixing a little smidge of um, orange or red to make it a tiny touch warmer. So do you see, I didn't make like a lemon yellow. I made it a slight, a slightly on a warmer side. So just grab like the tiniest little smidge of either red or orange and add it in so it has that warmth. Just a little touch. And for anyone who is set on doing the edges the right way, you can actually continue those two petals onto the edge here. It's quite a commitment because you're gonna need to do that with every color going forward. It was easy with gray, but it's gonna be a bit more mixing as we go further. 
what else? It's not that big of a deal. I'm just spending extra minute doing that. And I'm going to do that with my teal as well. Hopefully I have enough paint left here on my plate. All right, and that's our first layer. And let me check if you guys have any questions. Let me check the chat here. That's funny. Well, I hope Q-tips are working well for you. I, I definitely would think Q-tips would be more difficult to use with, uh, to work with, because they are uh, so absorbent, right? So, but I hope it works. Let us know how it works out. And also, you can always come back to this video. If you realize that it's not working well for you, uh, whenever you find your brushes or get a new brushes, it's right here. So you always can come back. And guys, notice a first layer, like as it starts drawing up, you can see that's a little streaky, right? You can start seeing all the imperfections. And this is another reason why we're doing more than one layer. We don't want that. We don't want the imperfections. We want it to be a solid coverage. Don't want any streakiness to it. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to first layer on my in-betweeners. So literally, you're just gonna mix a color that's in between whatever you have there. Since we're already on yellow, we may as well make an in-betweener on yellow and orange. And here you can use, if medium still works for you, great. If not, you can use medium in combination with small because it's really hard to get into those little spots in between. So you might want to use a small brush just for those areas. All right, so I'll make this one first. So this was my yellow, right? I'm going to make it again. So yellow, white, and I'm going to add a bit of red. And this was my orange. So I'm going to make something in between this and that. So again, the same components, just different proportions. You make a yellow first and then you add orange little smidge by little smidge until you arrive at something that looks like it could go right in between them too. I think this should work for me personally. Let's try it. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. And again, all those little areas, if you can get there with a medium brush, go for it. If you cannot, you can always switch to a smaller brush. And since I already committed to my edges, I may as well continue. All right, next one, I'm gonna do a mixture between orange and pink. So same story. So this is what it looks like here. It looks like a coral color. Um, but here's my pink, here's my orange. I'm just going to make something in between. So I'm going to start with the base of white again. And I'm going to make some, add some red. So basically I'm making my pink again. But this time I'm just going to add, actually this spot was not a good choice because there seems like that gray underneath is still a little wet. So it's giving it Bit of a gray shade let's find a cleaner spot let's mix it right here so some white some red makes nice pink and then i'm gonna add a little bit of yellow Let's try it. Hmm. I think that could be a bit pinker, to be honest. Yeah, that's a better color. That's pinker. I like that. I'll keep it. 
Again, you always have a chance to change your mind on a second layer and adjust it. Hey, you know what? Never mind. It's still a little too light. Let's make it darker. So a little more pink, a little more yellow. Okay, I'm liking this more. Yeah, that's a better color. Then I'm gonna do in between a pink and purple. So again, I'm gonna start with making base of pink. So I'm gonna take some of my pink. Actually, if you still have, let's say, if you mix lots of pink and purple, you can just take some of your pink, some of your purple, mix them up. Half and half, and great, that's your color. It's just I personally, as you notice, I don't mix too much of one color. So I always mix every color individually. But if you still have those two colors mixed, great, just combine them, and that's your in-between color. Combine them, that's your in-between color. So for me, I'm gonna start by making my pink again. And then I'm gonna start adding blue to it. That may have been already too much. So we're just gonna have to adjust it now a little bit by adding more white and more red. Let's see, what would that be like? I think it's a little too close, so let's add more white and more red. All right, this one I think is kind of close to what I was looking for. Maybe it's a little too purple still. Uh, so the thing with blue, blue is a very dominant color. So that's why every time we mix purple, we always start with pink because even if you add a tiny smidge of blue, it just overtakes everything. You have to be cautious with it. All right, I have this one. Now I'm gonna to move to this one. So I could probably just use the same as a base and just add a bit more blue at this point. Let's see. It's actually not bad. It looks about right. It might need to be a little bit darker. So for darkness, I'm just adding a bit more red and a bit more blue. So all my colors except a white, not adding white, but really all the other colors that are present in this color. All right, and next one is gonna be my in between our blue. So I'm gonna start by mixing light blue here. I'm gonna take some white, take a little bit of blue, but now I'm gonna make it a little darker by adding more blue and a tiny smidge of red to give it just a touch of a purple undertone. Let's try this. Could be, I think, a little more purple. So basically, that's what you do. You do a smidge and you adjust it. When you do a smidge, then you adjust it until you find the right color. You don't commit to a color until you love it. I think that's not too bad, actually. That's pretty good. Maybe a touch more darkness. And whenever I say touch more darkness, do not add black under any circumstance. Just add the color that's present there. Just means it needs a bit less white proportionally. All right, and only two left for the first layer. 
So I'm gonna do the in-betweener on this two and then green in-betweener on yellow and blue. So this is this was my teal, right? I'm gonna mix, actually I may need to refill my white first. Let's see what I can get out of it. So again, I'm gonna start by making light blue. I don't need much of that one, just a little bit. And then again, I'll just add a tiny smidge of yellow. This time I'm just gonna add a smaller smidge than the previous time. Okay, it needs a bit more blue. Yep, that's the one. I think that's the one. All right, and the last one is gonna be green. So I'm gonna take some yellow, some white, which I'm now completely out of. And I'm gonna add a little bit of blue, just a tiny smidge of blue to it. And I'll add it right in between. Ta-da! That's all our first layer of colors. So how is that for you guys? You know, it's a lot of mixing, but after this, you'll be pros at mixing. Because that is a lot of mixing. Um, so let me refill my white quickly, because I'm completely out here. And then we're going to continue. And the next thing we're actually going to do is going to be our middle. Because our middle doesn't have anything there just yet. All right, white is in there. Everything is where it should be. So I'm gonna move to my middle and I'm just gonna do um, yellow. That's pretty much for my first layer. So I'm just gonna take some white, some yellow, mix them up, nothing special, not adding anything, just white and yellow. And I'm gonna dab, 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 dab. For middle, for my first layer. Done, done, and done. Now we could technically proceed on this as soon as it's dry for me personally. It's sort of dry. I wouldn't say it's fully dry yet. So I, I may need a couple extra minutes here um, for it to dry up. I may just get rid of some of the blobs here because sometimes paint it leaves the little blobs. I'm gonna flatten them up a bit to make sure they dry faster.
Okay, and I'm gonna wait um, maybe two minutes. My paint dries extremely fast, actually, and this is almost dry, but it does have like a little, uh, you can actually probably tell, do you see on the glare what's dry, what's not? If you have a blow dryer nearby, you're more than welcome to use it. It's very helpful. I just don't happen to have it in my studio right now, and I don't feel like going <clears throat> and searching for it in the house. Plus my paint dries fast, it will literally take a minute for it to dry. Um, but yeah, the reason why I don't wanna to proceed to the second layer before first layer is dry is um, if you wanna have a solid, solid coverage without any streaks, the first layer needs to be dry. If your first layer is not fully dry, but it has like wet spots, as you start laying out your second layer, those spots are gonna remain streaky. So basically almost it's like it doesn't count there as a second layer. It only counts as a second layer and adds the solid coverage if everything is dry. So because I don't want any streakiness in the end, and why it happens is um, the paint that you add, instead of actually adding second layer, it's gonna start removing the first layer if it's not fully dry. So that's why we gotta wait for it to fully cure. Um, doesn't have to be like a full cure, like 24 hours, but just make sure it's dry, dry to touch. Um, to answer your question, what a brand of paint to use? We actually, we are big fans of this brand of paint that's currently not available in stores. It was just very unfortunate because we love it so much and I already run out of a few colors and I feel very upset about it. So I'll show you. This is my paint of choice, Start Acrylics. Again, not available in the stores, unfortunately, currently. Um, I'm hoping they will come back in stock because I love it so much, but I do have a couple different, um, a couple different, a couple paints of a different brands because again, as I run out of paints of my favorite brand, I have to substitute with other, they're still comparable. So I do have, a few bottles of Artist Loft as well. Just to be honest with you, Artist Loft is a really nice brand, but the only color in that, like the larger bottles that I don't like is blue. So the blue, I'm using different brands, um, but the rest you could use Artist Loft, it's very comparable. Um, the only thing I would say about colors in general, it doesn't matter what brand you use, it really doesn't matter at all. Um, what matters is that your pigments are pure. They don't need to have something pre-mixed. So as you know, we mix primaries only, right? So my blue is always either Fatalo blue or primary blue. I never use ultramarine because ultramarine has red pre-mixed into it. It's purple-ish color. Fatalo actually is a bit on the greener side, but that the Fatalo can mix this way really well and this way really well. So it can mix into purples beautifully. It can mix into greens beautifully. If you go with ultramarine, which is a bit more similar to this color, even this color versus just straight blue, it mixes into purples beautifully, but into greens, horribly. It's gonna be mud. So if you want your teals and lighter blues to be bright and vibrant, it's either phthalo or primary. For the same for red. So for red, it's important what red you use. If you use red, that's more like a fire truck red. It's gonna mix beautiful into oranges, but it's gonna mix very crappy into purples. It's gonna give you very muddy, almost brownish, brown-like purples because it has yellow pre-mixed into it. And that's what yellow, red, and blue do. They make brown. So for red, we always use primary or um, I think it's called bright sometimes red but it doesn't really matter what the name of it is. Just look at the pigment. It has to look almost like it has a pinker tint to it. Like if you look at my paint, more transparent, it really is more of a magenta color. Do you see? It has that magenta undertone. So just avoid, if you're using primaries, any red that has orange undertone, because it's not gonna give you beautiful purples. So these two colors are very important, which colors you use. Yellow, I haven't really come across yellow that doesn't mix very well yet. 
The only yellow that doesn't mix very well if it has a high content of white premixed into it. So don't buy any yellow that's like lemon yellow or like very light pastel yellow because it's just not going to give you every time you're going to be using it with other colors, it's going to automatically add white to it. So if you're aiming for pastel colors, great. But if you're aiming for deeper colors, it's just not going to give you that ability. So that's in regard to colors, because I know a lot of the time people say, oh, my paint doesn't mix. I can follow the same instructions, but it just doesn't mix the same. And they would be right, because depending on which color you use, they may already have certain colors pre-mixed into them. We just use straight pigments that have nothing pre-mixed into them, because they're best for mixing. Yeah, and for those of you guys who are struggling to keep up, I don't know if you mentioned at the if you joined right at the beginning, because I did mention that um, the video tutorials that we either upload or post live are designed uh, for fast pace because we want you guys to pause them. We, you know, we get such a variety of people and everyone, um, some people paint extremely fast, some people extreme, paint extremely slow and there's nothing wrong with either. It's not like if you paint fast, you're a good artist, if you paint slow, you're a bad artist. Absolutely not. It really is the comfort level what you're comfortable with but we find that it's easier solution for um, someone to just pause it or rewind and rewatch sections if you really like to take your time on painting and you're just more maybe you're a perfectionist maybe that's your thing um and you really like to you know do all that just rewind and rewatch and once the video is recorded pause it fix the image on your screen versus people who actually paint faster and they have so they struggle to sit through the pauses because they literally have nothing to do. We find that a lot of people, when we used to do tutorials at a slower pace, we had a lot of people that said, I finished three minutes ago and I'm doing nothing. And that happens every five, 10 minutes because we waited for everyone, right? So we got rid of the waiting times because it it is a very reasonable complaint. Let's just say that for someone who paints naturally faster whether professional or complete beginner. And they just have to wait for a very long time. And they just, you know, they give up halfway through because they're like, I, I just don't know what to do. And they move on to something else. They start cooking, they start, you know, texting, emailing, because attention span and personality. So yeah, if you are a beginner or just more perfectionist and you like your time, please pause the video or rewind it, or rewatch sections. It's options available to you live and later from the video as well. All right, guys, I think this is actually perfect. This is all dry. So I am going to continue. Um, I'm going to start with my orange because that's what I started with. I may as well, right? So I'm going to take my, I'm going to make the same color again. If it doesn't happen to be the exact same, it's not the end of the world. Just again, some orange. So white, yellow, a little bit of red. Orange of your choice. Again, in my case, I'm making it a bit more pastel. And I'm just gonna start by A, coloring in the entire flower petal. And then, so the uh, next thing what we can do is either, if you're a slower painter, um, you can just take the same color and add a couple smidges of it on uh, nearby. Petals. If you're a fast painter, you can actually mix your next color and then add it on top. I really think this is a bit of more of a less complicated way of doing it is to add it right away. That way, if this paint dries, you don't have to remix it again. Uh, but if you're paint really fast, you may find it easier for you to just move to next color or if using pre-mixed paint, do it and then add this on top. 
So for example, next color that I'm gonna move on to, I'm gonna move on to, let's say pink. So I'm gonna make my pink. I'm gonna scoop some white on the side, a little bit of red. Again, make the any shade of pink of your choice. I'm gonna go ahead and paint it. So for those who already added the smidge of orange in here, you're just gonna sort of paint around it in a way that like you can blend your pink into it. You don't have to completely leave it out. So basically you almost like blend it in to still, but don't paint over your orange, right? You wanna, you wanna have it visible. This is why we added it. And I'm gonna take a smidge of pink and I'm gonna add it on this one too. And here we go. This actually filled nice with this two colors that we added because it's so small, right? And it already had a base. So by us just adding a couple of smidges of orange and a couple of smidges of pink, it creates a second layer on that color. Now we don't need to add second layer altogether. But I'm gonna take the same pink and I'm gonna add a smidge onto my orange. All right, moving next, this color. So um, let's make it again. So I'm gonna scoop some white. I'm gonna start by making pink again. White, red. Mix, 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 mix. And start adding blue little by little because blue is very bossy color. You don't wanna add too much. see this looks actually let's make it a little redder this looks good but it's a little too blue so this is better so again i'm going to add the whole thing here and a little bit of this purple on my pink A little bit of this purple on this in-betweener. And then a little bit of my pink, because right, I, I just did my pink. So I'm gonna add some of that pink okay, on an in-betweener. And on my purple. All right, and maybe I'll go back and just smudge them a little bit with a clean brush just to have a bit more blending. Not super necessary, but wouldn't hurt either. All right, I'm gonna move to my next color, which is gonna be this blue. Again, you can add this purple on it right away or you can add it in a second. Totally whatever works for you. You may as well add it now because I don't have much of this paint, so it may dry by the time I get there. So I may as well, right? And I'm going to make this color. So I'm going to do some blue, some white, and again, a smidge of red. Let's see, let's try that. No, I think this is a little too blue. I'm gonna need to make it lighter and more purple. So it's the same components. It's basically, honestly guys, once you get a hang of it, it's pretty easy because it's literally just white as mixer color into everything and you just use two colors on the left and the right, right? So pink and blue, blue and yellow, uh, straight blue, straight pink, straight yellow, 
pink and yellow. Like your flower almost guiding you. Right, this one looks reasonable. Add it in here. By the way, add a little bit and then between her. Just a tiny smidge of it on the purple. And if you want to, you can add a little bit on your blue. And I'm gonna move to my super easy color, light blue. So just white and blue, nothing extra. Go ahead, color it in. And a little bit of that on the previous color. A little bit of that on the back color. And on the near back color. Don't think I added here the dark purple on the back one, this one. So we'll add it now. All right, moving on to my teal. So again, starting by mixing light blue. So some white, a tiny smidge of blue. And some yellow. I'm going to add it right here and I'll mix that blue that you just smidged in there right away. Yes, hair dryer is the best. It really speeds things up big time. It's very helpful. Oops. I'm forgetting about my edge here. Mm. Almost there. And I'm going to do my green. So just to take a tiny smidge of yellow, a uh, teal, add it onto my green. Green is so small, right? So I'm not going to go too crazy in there. Um, same with the yellow, it's hard to mix the steel into yellow without it turning a full on green. So I'm just going to move to yellow at this point. I'm going to mix again some yellow, some white, and the tiniest, tiniest smidge of red, just like a little dot to give it a bit of a warmer undertone. I'm gonna do my yellow flower petal. Do you see I overlap that teal, that orange that I added? And add a smidge of that into my yellow, uh, into my green part, into my teal part. Just a little bit. And the same on the other side. So into this orange into this orange as well. Because this orange is already dry, I'm actually going to um, blend it with a brush. So I'm gonna wash my brush, dab it on a paper towel, and with a clean wet brush, I'm gonna go ahead and blend it, because I can't blend it on wet, on wet orange, because it's just already dry at this point. It's just not wet anymore. All right. 
And I will give you guys a minute to do all of that because I know it's a lot. So I'll give you a minute to catch up. And then we're going to move to highlights. We're going to add highlights to all of them. It's going to be some linear highlights, dry brushed white. And it's going to be some snow, but also we're going to add the darkness. So we're going to add some darkness from the middle. And we're going to add second layer on the middle as well. But I will give you guys a minute to finalize this first. All right, guys, hopefully we have that. Um, I'm gonna move to second layer on my middle. So for my middle, I'm actually going to do a little bit of orange here and a little bit of green. I know it's really hard to see them there, but they are there. So I'm gonna start with just yellow. So yellow and white, mix them up. Again, do the same thing, dab, 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 the whole thing. Now take some orange, doesn't matter whichever. And again, orange is just yellow and red and white. In this case, just dab, dab, dab some of that around the upper part, just a little bit. And for my bottom, you can take green or, sorry, um, green or teal, or uh, whichever you prefer. Actually, it's gonna be on the other side since it's a reverse. Let's redub dab it. Let's redub dab it right here. That's how it's supposed to be. Okay. And then you can make green or teal or just blue. Either is fine because we're doing it on wet. So I'm gonna take Maybe some green, which is yellow, blue, and white. I'm gonna dab it right here just a little bit. All right, awesome. Now it's time for my darker color. So the darker colors I'm gonna use two shades. I'm going to use that lighter gray and I'm going to use the darker gray. And by lighter, I don't mean it's going to be necessarily very light. It's just lighter out of the two. So I'm going to take some a white, scoop it on the side. I'll add some black. Let's try something like that and see how it works. See, it's about, I would say it's about medium to medium dark color, but closer to medium. And I'm going to take just a little bit of it on my brush because I'm going to use a dry brush technique which means you use bare minimum of paint on your brush. I'm just gonna flick it. You see, I'm gonna flick it around the 
area from the bottom up, everywhere from the bottom up, to separate my flower petals first. I'm gonna do that everywhere. So just literally following almost like the outline of a flower petal and then a flick in the middle. If you find that it's difficult to do in some areas with a medium brush, you're more than welcome to switch to a small one that works too. And then I'm gonna add a bit of the same color in the middle of every flower petal. So again, dry brush technique basically means using very little bit of paint. Right, so that's our first layer. Let me make some of them lighter and longer. And then I'm gonna do my second layer. And the second layer, you might wanna do actually with a small brush. If needed, so it works for you, nothing wrong with that. But you might find it helpful to have a small one instead. And I'm gonna take some block. A bit more black, add it into my gray that I just use, make it darker. I'm not using full on black, by the way, I'm using just dark gray. Um, if you want, you could use full on black, but it's going to be quite contrast. I find that it's enough contrast for me just using dark gray as well. Like I'm not craving more contrast than that. And I'm going to do the same thing, just less in with a small brush. Can you see more of the fine lines this time? All right, so this is what pretty much looks like. Of course, you can make it always darker if you need it to, but you can also make it darker later too. It doesn't have to be done right now. 
Um, I'll give you guys a minute and then we're going to move to our white. Alrighty guys, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take my, I mean you could use your medium brush or you can use your large one, it really is up to you. I would say you can try both. I think I'm gonna start with a large one even maybe and see how that goes. And we're just gonna take some white, we're gonna water it down a little bit for consistency and transparency. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit of that paint. So I'm gonna dab off my brush on a paper towel to get rid of extra paint. And then I'm gonna flick from the tip of my flower petal down to lighten it up very lightly. Do you see how lightly and transparent it is? That's what I'm aiming for, that. So again, just a little bit, you can dab off extra extra on the paper towel. And I'm gonna do that on every single one. And again, medium or large brush, whatever works for you. All right. And notice what I just did because they weren't blended to my liking. I just washed my brush, dabbed it off on a paper towel, and with a clean wet brush, I went over it and kind of smudged it a little bit. And again, I'm going to smudge it, so I'm going to wash my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and with a clean, slightly wet brush, I'll just go ahead and smudge them a little more while it's still wet. And then if you wanted to, you can repeat that with a higher concentration of white on a following loop. So basically do it again, but this time just apply, um, so make your brush strokes less, right? Don't go as far with it. Optionally. 
doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have to do it. One layer is plenty, second layer is not super necessary because we're still gonna do the snow resting on our flower petals. All right, and I'm gonna move next to some dabbing on my middle. So I'm gonna take some white on my medium brush this time. You can even do small one. I'm just gonna da 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 closer to the edge here. And then I'm going to dab, dab, dab some right in the middle as well. All right, and after that, I can move to my dabbing of snow. But let me check if anyone has questions. <laughs> no worries. It's totally fine if your looks nothing like mine. It's unique to you, right? You're a unique person. You're a unique artist. So your would look unique to you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. That's what matters the most. All right, guys, now I'm going to do some white. Again, I'm going to dabble my medium brush at this point, but you can even do small brush for this if, you, if it works for you. And I'm just going to start dabbing right at the ends, almost like placing the snow on my flower. I'm gonna follow a little bit down those lines. And then you can add a couple more in a more like a linear manner, starting at the top and going down. And that's our snow. So again, very lightly, same dry brush technique.
Almost done. And another area where I'm going to add a few is actually like a little bit lower, closer to the edges or following a couple of those middle lines. But this one's the ones that are going to be closer to the middle and to be super, super light. So make sure you don't use too much paint on your brush. You can even use a smaller brush altogether if you prefer. All right, and then I am going to finish up with some dots for a falling snow. And what I'm going to do for that is I'm just going to use, if you have, um, if any of your brushes has a rounded back end, just use a rounded back end. Dip it in white. I'm going to go ahead and add some snow falling. It can go on a flower, on a background, everywhere, everywhere you want it to go. You don't have, if and none of your brushes have a rounded back end, but all of them have more like a chopped off back end, not a big deal. Um, just grab the painting side of your small brush. I'm gonna use that. If you want to, of course, you can add a couple more of like dots around the areas where you have snow positions, for example, in the middle of the flower, I can add a couple dots around the same areas where I dabbed. On my flower petals, I can add a couple of uh, dots here on the same place that I position my snow just to break it up optionally. It doesn't have to, again, one or the other is totally fine. It doesn't hurt to have both. All right, and then last thing that's left for you guys is just to sign it. So pick a good spot, wherever that may be. You can put your name, your initials, or anything else that you would like. Just to signify that this is your beautiful piece of art that you have created. I'm going to sign mine. Let's see, maybe right here. Done. All right, let's see if anyone has any questions. Yes, awesome. I'm glad Q-tips work perfect for dabbing. You're right, that would be perfect because they're so circular, right? Notice how my uh, brush strokes here look a little fluffier than the on the one that I originally made because I used different brush. So uh, yeah, Q-tips actually would be perfect snow brush strokes. So that, yeah, good tip on that. Appreciate it. Um, so yeah, if anyone in the group wants to use a Q-tips, freely go ahead. Um, and guys, of course, again, feel free to edit it. It's never done until you love it. It's only done once you love it. So if there's something that you want to add even now, like you want to correct your colors, maybe you want to add a flick of one color or the other, you're more than welcome to. It doesn't have to be finished. But the same goes for maybe you want to add a bit more contrast. So for example, you want to add a bit more black um, or just darken up your gray. Totally fine, whatever you need to do with it. Or if you want to go to the background and you want to add a bit more white around your flower, maybe you're missing this, you know, white around your flower. Or maybe you want to darken out the edge, the ends, corners here. Totally, go for it. Again, whatever needs to be done, it doesn't mean once we pass that step, you can never go back. You can go back to any of the steps if you feel like there's some editing that needs to be done or you need to add something or remove something. Totally fine. Again, not done until you love it. And that's pretty much it. Well, thank you all for joining me. If this is your first time painting with us and you find that this is your cup of tea and you're like, yeah, I can get behind this. I might do a couple more of those. Feel free to check out all the other video tutorials and previous live events that we have here on our YouTube. But also check out what's coming up live because we do have, we schedule our live events approximately about a month in advance. So you can see everything that's coming up within the next month. And you can, if any of this interests you, you can click notify me. And then once we go live, it will notify you. And also feel free to check out our website. It's in the description of this video. There's a link. You can just see everything that we have um, posted and going to host within a next little while. 
So check that out. Many thanks to all of you guys who actually put faith in my teaching and in this tutorial and pre-tipped me through the website even before the tutorial. That is always so much appreciated. And if you did enjoy this tutorial and you want to say thank you by tipping me, you can always do that, but feel free um, not to. It's not an obligation ever. Um, it's only optional way of saying thank you. And there is a PayPal link in the description of the video, so you can click on that and then choose any amount that you want to tip if you decide to do that. And if you guys have any questions now, feel free to ask. And if you have questions later or you're making this from the video, you can always ask them in comments. We do check comments. Not very often, we don't check them every day, just a heads up. Um, so you'll likely not get a response immediately um, or within a day, but you will get a response within a few days. That we promise because we do check them and we do respond. If you require more immediate assistance, if you're like in the middle of painting and you need help now, you can always message us on Facebook or email us because that's a faster way to get a hold of us. We respond to Facebook messages and emails way faster than we do to comments. So feel free to do that if you need assistance with anything. And there's also a link in the description of this video where you can share your artwork because we love seeing how they turned out. It always makes us feel like we're doing it together in the same room. So feel free to share it. It's a Facebook group just specifically designed for that, specifically designed for everyone who participated in our tutorials to share the results. So people who also did it can you know, relate to what was struggle or what was really great and what was easy, what was difficult. And you know, share your results like if we were doing it in the same room. You're welcome, thanks for joining guys. And that's pretty much all for me for today. I don't see any questions in chat. So I'm assuming everyone is fine. And that's a good news, that's good, I'm glad. But if you do think of something, email us or message us. Be happy to help. Thanks for joining me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. Bye, guys.